Hi everyone. For the next few minutes I'm going to talk about orbits. And I'm actually not going to use any equations because I think we can learn a lot about orbits just simply by looking at them. So here's the Earth, our big blue planet. And we've had, we have some object here. Maybe uh, this is a really tall building. Of course that would be grotesquely not to scale, but that's okay. Let's imagine maybe we're standing at the top of the skyscraper or space elevator, whatever it is. And for starters, let's just drop this thing and see what happens. So the y direction is the uh, up and down here. We're going to give it zero speed in the y direction. OK, this shouldn't be too surprising. All right, it's falling. Here are our energy graphs. So we have potential energy red, total energy cyan, and kinetic energy is yellow. So it might have looked like when I ran that, it might have looked like the total energy was changing, but it's actually not. That's just a, an auto scaling effect. Notice that the uh, demarcation of energy here is staying the same the whole time. So the total energy is constant. You can see why just by looking at the kinetic and potential energies. The closer it gets to the Earth, the lower the potential energy and correspondingly the greater the kinetic energy such that uh, the sum of those two is always this constant y. Okay, so nothing too surprising there. You drop something off a building, it falls until it hits the ground. Now let's say we were gonna throw this maybe as hard as we could and see what happens. So let's give it some initial y velocity. We give it our good college try. So there we threw it and, oh, still hits the ground. Okay, well that's to be expected. That's what happens in real life, right? You take a baseball or something, doesn't matter how hard you throw it, it's gonna hit the ground eventually. But let's just say maybe we're super strong or we have a powerful cannon or something and we can shoot this thing much, much faster than we could throw it. Then what would happen? And let's speed up the animation speed just a little bit. And now we're going to throw it much faster. Well, it looks like it's going to hit the ground, but wait a minute, we threw it so fast that by the time it was going to hit the ground, it was already sort of past, past that part, and it ends up going actually all the way around. Well, there you have it. That's what an orbit is. You throw something or shoot something so fast that instead of it hitting the ground, it goes far enough so that it makes it all the way around the planet that it's orbiting. Let's look at the energy graph here. So what we're seeing is total energy is constant, as we would expect, but now uh, kinetic and potential energy are doing some kind of waving motion. Whenever the object gets close to the Earth, then we see its kinetic energy is a maximum. And that's explained by the potential energy being a minimum. Whenever you're close to the heavy object, then you're going to have a smaller potential energy. And since energy is conserved, that's where kinetic energy is maximal. Likewise, when you're over here at this part of the orbit, then you can see that potential energy is a maximum because you're farthest away from the planet. And kin kinetic energy, correspondingly, would be a minimum as you can see on the graph. Now that may look kind of like a circle, but it's not. That's actually an ellipse. And we know that because the center of the Earth here would be in the center of the trajectory if it were actually a circle. For an ellipse, technically, this is the center is at one of the focal points of the ellipse. But we would know it was a circle if we saw the Earth right in the middle. So there is one possible velocity, y velocity, at which we could shoot this thing so that it would end up going in a circle. So let me show you that. And now, this is a, an interesting trajectory. Notice it's never getting any closer to the Earth. And as such, its potential energy is never changing. That's the red line here. Total energy is not changing, therefore the kinetic energy is not changing. That simply means that the speed of this object is constant. So 1 half mv squared, it's always going to be the same. Minus gmm over r, well r is constant because it's a circle, so that's always going to be the same. Here we have something that's always falling, but not getting any closer to the Earth. It sounds kind of like a, a zen koan, what is always falling, never getting any closer. Well that would be 
a circular orbit, just like we see here. We might make it fast enough so that we're not quite sure what's going to happen. So like in this case, and maybe it's coming back and maybe it's, it's not, because it's going sufficiently fast, maybe it's just going to keep going forever. Well, we know that's not going to happen, because if we look at the energy graph, total energy is negative, so we can be pretty darn sure that eventually it's going to come back around. And if we wait long enough, then we'll start to see, indeed, it is, it is curving around and it will come back. This would be considered a highly elliptical orbit. It's going to take a really long time to come back. It's actually a lot like some kind of comet, like Halley's Comet. Well, in that case, this would be the Sun, and uh, Halley's Comet goes out here. No name relation to, to my name, by the way. So it goes all the way out here and comes back, and that takes 75 years. I remember when I was a little kid, I was out on the back porch with my dad, and we saw Halley's Comet, and uh, I asked if if he thought we might see it again, and he said, no, I, I probably won't see it again, but you might. So I'm definitely crossing my fingers for that. It's just kind of amazing to think about the time scale of human events compared to something like how long it takes a comet to come back to the solar system. Anyway, what about a truly escaping velocity? Like... All right, so here it's, it's going out. And notice the total energy is slightly positive, so it is going to be able to escape. It's going to be infinitely far away, eventually, which means the potential energy will eventually be zero. K will end up being the total energy at some point. So this yellow line is actually asymptotic to the blue line, but it might take a very, very long time to see that actually happen. This is definitely not coming back. We can so even start to see now there's very little curvature in this line. It's not an ellipse, so it's not going to curve around and come back. It's just going to keep going. In fact, it's, it's actually approaching a straight line. It's just going to go off forever. Starting from here, the planet is following this kind of kind of shape. So that's part of a hyperbola. Hyperbolas are, are the kinds of trajectories that are escaping. All right, so those are the possibilities. And notice we got all of those different possibilities simply by changing the initial y velocity. If we have a y velocity of zero, it just crashes into the Earth. A little bit more, it's going to go out. And it would be an ellipse, except for the fact that it crashes into the Earth. So next time you, uh, you throw an object off the top of a building, well, you probably don't want to do that. It's probably against uh, UT regulations. But you can think about that object as wanting to travel in an ellipse around the center of the Earth, but it actually hits the Earth instead. But if you were to throw it or shoot it fast enough and there were no air friction, then it would go around. That was the first ellipse that we saw. If you threw it even faster, it would go in a circle, and that would be that kind of always falling case and never getting any closer. And faster than a circle would be another ellipse with the Earth at the left focus point of the ellipse. And then even faster would give you the hyperbola that we see here. Those are all the possibilities.